Uh, no major safety issues in this experiment. Always be aware of the powerful magnetic field from large magnets and don't eat or heat osmium. And maybe keep your smartphone farther away from a magnet than I do. Hi, it's time to answer the question I asked you in my latest video. Which is fastest to a magnet? A 1 gram, a 2 grams or the two of them together as a 3 gram sample? Most of you think that they will be equally fast. I was surprised by the results. Maybe you will be too. In any case, I've got some explaining to do. I used this test in a video to show the magnetic susceptibility of 1 gram samples of elements from the platinum group. I adjusted for weight since the samples weren't exactly 1 gram. I ended up with the elements in the right order, but perhaps I shouldn't have adjusted for weight as some of you pointed out. And you have a strong argument. Magnetic susceptibility is independent of weight. If a volume equal to 1 gram is attracted to a magnet with a given force, then 2 grams, double the volume, is attracted with double the force. If double the sample is affected by double the force, then it doesn't matter if the sample weighs 1 or 2 grams. The force per gram is exactly the same, so the acceleration towards the magnet is the same, right? Well, I still adjust it for weight because, to my logic, it must make a difference in the setup. Like how deep the styrofoam boat is sitting in the water and causing drag. But it wasn't very scientific of me just to assume or guess, so let's test it instead. Here's the setup with one gram placed on styrofoam floating on water. It is attracted by a very large magnet, a 6x4 inches neodymium magnet, twice as big as in earlier tests. Another difference is that I'm using this release mechanism made of Lego. I want to eliminate any errors my shaky human hands can cause on such a sensitive setup. With this pneumatic arm, the release and the sample's distance to the magnet should be very uniform compared to when I just used a pulsetang. Pulsetang being Danish for sausage tongs. Alright, here's the first test with the 1 gram sample. The first surprise is how much faster the double magnet attracts the osmium. With the 6x2 inches magnet, the average time for the 1 gram sample was 32 seconds. I tried 25 times with the 6x4 inches and it was more than twice as fast. The average time for the 1 gram sample was around 12.9 seconds. The setup may not be 100% similar, but the new magnet is definitely better at detecting the very weak paramagnetism of osmium. Nice! But what about the 2 and 3 gram samples? Well, let me show it this way. The 3 clips showing the average times the best. Ready to see the difference, if any, between them? Here we go. 3, 2, 1. Hmm, not what I and most of you expected. The heavier samples are clearly faster, with the 3 grams being the fastest. A third of you guessed right in the poll. Here are all the times from the 75 runs. I also counted video frames to get a more precise result. I must admit I didn't film all 75 successful runs. The difficulties in setting up the samples in the same spot every time has to be experienced in real life to believe it. In order to not lose my mind, I decided to concentrate on that instead of filming every run. But, as shown here, I wasn't way off with the stopwatch. Now, how do I explain that the 3 gram sample is the fastest? Look at it go. It is sitting very low in the water, so it must have more drag than the other two. 
I believe it has something to do with volume. The heavier samples have larger volumes and by having a larger volume, some of the sample is closer to the magnet right from the start. The intensity of the magnetic field is highly dependent on distance to the magnet. Being just a little closer to the magnet all of the way in the run is an advantage. The larger sample will simply be in a slightly stronger magnetic field in all of the run. And this more than makes up for the extra drag from being deeper in the water. Let me know in the comments if you have another explanation. I haven't seen anyone else use this setup to show magnetic susceptibility, so we are charging unknown territory here. But hey, I hope you are here to see original videos and experiments. The setup is not good enough to find an exact value for magnetic susceptibility, but it sure does work well enough to find the right order as shown in Exotic Elements vs Magnet Part 5. But I was wrong about the way I corrected for weight in the video. I simply took the time and multiplied it with the weight. This way, I did end up correcting for the heavier samples having a faster time, but that was a lucky guess and the correction was way too big. The tests with osmium show that double the weight volume from 1 to 2 grams only makes the time around 10% faster. I corrected like it would be double as fast. <coughs> Luckily for me, the metals in the platinum group are dense, so the samples were all of low volume and my corrections didn't change the order of the elements after all. In the previous video I also used this milligram scale and a Lego rig with the sphere magnet. A minus reading indicates a lift paramagnetism in the sample. It worked well for most of the elements, but the magnetism of iridium and osmium were too weak to be detected, even in milligrams. Here I try with the 2 grams osmium sample, but it doesn't change anything. I then try using a force multiplier lever to enhance the effect. If multiplied enough, we should see a small negative reading on the scale. However, I just couldn't get this setup to stabilize. I'm not sure why, maybe it's the butterfly effect. The vibrations from the butterflies flapping around outside in my garden are messing with the measurement. Nah, just kidding. My milligram scale just isn't good enough to show the weak magnetism of osmium when sealed with all this weight pressing down on it. That's why I like the styrofoam boat method. It is extremely sensitive, especially with this new magnet. Hope you enjoyed this closer look on my test method. I certainly learned more about it and my mistake in the earlier video. I personally enjoy learning by doing in my videos, even when I sometimes fail. Reminds me of the principles of learning used by my sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is a problem solving website where you can learn to think like a scientist by performing your own thought experiments. They have just launched a new course called Science Essentials, where you can learn more about for example the scientific process and measurements in an easy to understand way. I'm a fan of science and always like learning more about it. If you want to learn more too and believe in active learning and embracing failure, I highly recommend you go to brilliant.org slash 75 and sign up for free. As a bonus, the first 275 people using the link will even get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Then you can do more crazy stuff without any safety warnings from me. I'm really happy so many of you guessed along in the poll and even commented about your thoughts. I have to use that poll feature again in future videos. Click like if you don't dislike what I do and thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.